Hey guys, your boy Chili here. Welcome back to C++ Game Engine Infrastructure. Today we are going to be supercharging our project with a little static analysis. Now before I jump into that, take a look at this code here. I've added a little bit of test code. And this test code exemplifies a mistake that I just, I just can't help myself. I continually make this mistake and every time I catch myself I'm like, I should know better. But at the same time, I know I'm going to do this again. Luckily, uh, I mean, you would at, at some point I, I I asked myself why doesn't the compiler warn me about this? Because this is really dumb and annoying, and I just want my compiler to tell me when I'm being dumb and annoying. And after looking into it, I found out that uh, there is a way to get the compiler to tell you what you're doing wrong in this situation. Right now, you can see here. You know, there's no warnings. Let me just do a rebuild solution. There's no warnings. Um, but, you know, those of you who are keen and C++ pilled will very quickly probably, you know, see what problem I am uh, alluding to here. So let's see if we can make our, our tool set here help us out. Help me out to stop being so dumb sometimes. So we're going to go into our property pages because we want to make sure that this applies to everything we do in all of our projects. And we're going to go down to code analysis. And what we are going to do here is uh, we are going to go to Microsoft. So we have a whole set of rules here. And we start off by default in the Microsoft native recommended rules. But we're going to configure this and uh, we're going to customize it because it does not enable by default the ones that I wish to be enabled. So we can, I mean, there's two big sections here. One of them is managed binary analysis, and I don't think any of that really applies. I think that might be CLR stuff, but I'm not exactly sure. But at any rate, none of them are set. But here, here's the ones that do kind of matter for us, native code. And uh, there's a lot of them, and I don't want to read them all but I know what I'm looking for. So we can just kind of filter that with a term. So the one I'm looking for is, I think it probably would be under, I think it would be under destructor. So we need virtual destructor. This is very important. Um, now there's another rule here that we can kind of add while we're at it. Override. So override explicitly, good. And don't override destructor explicitly. So let's add these two. This one, kind of important in my opinion. This one, really only a style issue, but we might as well add it in here. All right. So we can see here it says this is a Microsoft rule set and cannot be modified. Well, I just modified it. Any changes will be saved to a copy. Okay. So we press Control S to save. And yes, it comes up with this little thing here. Let's go to the root of our solution and let's just call this uh, baseline. And this will be baseline dot rule set. All right. So now it should be all good, right? Now, if I run this, I should get an error. Like I make now. Okay. Well, maybe I'll just rebuild solution then. and we'll get the warning. No warning. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, we'll go back to the properties. We'll see that it is Microsoft native recommended rules. That's not right. That's just the one we had before, but I changed it. It should be copy of Microsoft native recommended rules. And here we see a problem right away. When we save it as another file, the name of the rule set is copy of you know, base rule set that you started with. But, you know, I have many projects. I will have many that have this name. It's kind of annoying. If I select this one, uh, wait, let me check a different one. Okay, yeah. All right, so let's check this one. Yeah, they all look about the same. But we notice here that it gives you the path to the file. And this one is not the path to our project. So this is the one we just saved. So this is the one that we want. Apply that. Okay. All right. So now we should have our static analysis. And actually, you might have noticed little squigglies popped up here telling us, hey, you got a virtual function on this uh, class here. You should probably add a virtual destructor because if you inherit from this class, 
uh, it's not going to be a good time without that virtual destructor. Good advice. And this one says that plus also you should probably, you know, explicitly override this stuff. So that's good. And if we build it, we'll also see that it says no warnings at all. Everything is fine. Wait a minute. That's not right. Okay. Go back to properties. We'll get there. We're getting there. We should enable code analysis on build so that that stuff catches our eye while we're building. Let's rebuild. What do we see? All right. So now we see our warnings in our build and we see our warnings in our IntelliSense. And the, they just went away, but now they're back again. Um, beautiful. So what do we do next? Well, before we fix these, let me show you just something a little interesting here. Um, little options for configuring our, uh, our rule set. So go back to Microsoft, we'll go configure. Yes, here we are. So if we right click here, we can show the properties of the rule set. And we see here is where that name comes in, copy of Microsoft native recommended rules. So we can change this to, I don't know, chill engine baseline C++ rules. There you go. Uh, and we could change the description as well if we wanted to. Could change it to O'Doyle. Only 90s kids. And then we save it. And now if I were, let me just close this. We don't need that anymore. Well, we probably do need it actually now that I think about it, but oh, we'll get back there. So now we can see here in our list here, it has a real name. It's not just copy of Microsoft. Uh, and the description is O'Doyle. And everyone is happy. Let's go back to configure here. Let me show you one more thing. So we can go through here. We can, here's all the different rules. A lot of these correspond to things in the C++ core guidelines. So if you're familiar with those, you can enable ones that resonate with you. Um, and again, you can filter. But another thing you can do is you can add or remove child rule sets. So you have this list of rule sets and you can say, uh, yeah, give me, you know, all of the ones from this rule set and it'll merge them into your custom rule set. So give me all, you know, the, the C++ core guidelines, STL rules, and it'll merge those all in. We're not going to do that right now, but we could if we wanted to. That's what I want. That's what I wanted to say, basically. All right. So now let's fix our problems. Problem the first. We need to say that our destructor is virtual. So we'll just kind of default that bad boy. If I save this, now if we wait a little bit, yeah, the IntelliSense will catch up and it will not complain anymore. We still got one problem here, easily addressed with the override. Override, there we go. And that should make this go away. That should make this go away. Let me save the file. That should make this, there we go. And then we rebuild the solution and we should get zero warnings. Bob is your uncle. Beautiful. All done. So like I said, there's lots of rules. You add the ones that you know, you come across as you come across them. I think you can build up your own custom rule set or you could Google, I don't know, online other people's recommended rule sets. I don't know, man. You do you. Um, now, one little thing that you might get caught up on here I don't want to come up with an example here, but it's going to come up probably in a future video. But if you include something uh, like windows.h, a lot of stuff in here is not going to uh, live in peaceful coexistence with a lot of the rules in your static analysis because windows.h is kind of jank. And so that's going to throw a whole bunch of garbage into your build output. But you can't just really go and muck around changing stuff in the Windows headers. So what you can do, I mean, you always have the option to just give up on the rule if you don't think it's going to add that much to your life. But if you really want to keep the rule and you really want to include Windows, what you can do is you can wrap the Windows include with some of this pragma bullshit where you can... First of all, you save the current state of the warning system. 
Then you can disable the ones that are causing problems. You include Windows, and then you pop to restore the previous state of all of the warning uh, enablements, if you will. Now, of course, that would be weird to do everywhere you include Windows.h, which is why you would have a separate header. Maybe you'd call it something like chillwin.h. And in that header, you would, you know, you would set the defines that customize Windows. You would set your warning pragmas. Then you include Windows. Then you reset. And instead of including Windows.h, Everywhere, you would include chillwin.h. You're familiar with this concept, probably, if you've ever seen my hardware 3D series. Uh, so we never include the raw Windows header. In that case, we would include our wrapper header that does a bunch of stuff that makes life beautiful. Okay, so this is something that we'll probably have to do in the future, but we won't be doing it today. One thing I just want to draw your attention to, I haven't, is that we set those static analysis settings in our baseline uh, property sheet so automatically it applies to all the stuff in our uh, all of our projects all of our flavors of build they all get this in one shot beautiful and any future projects that we add we are going to attach the baseline property sheet and they will also get these settings just a just a wonderful time. And one of the beauties about uh, these rule sets here, our custom rule sets, they live in the file here called baseline.ruleset. As we go ahead in the future, we'll be adding, you know, the rules that um, define us as an individual. We will define our personality based on our rule set and we'll build it up. And the nice thing about having this file is you start a new project, you just copy the file in there and you've got all the, the familiar warm and fuzzy rules that uh, you know and love. And that's why that's amazing. Same with our baseline file here. We can use this in a new project and we get all the settings that we love. Uh, so that is why I like this method of setting up your project. Now, uh, speaking of you know building up your rule set, there's tons of other good rules that we could be adding. I don't want to waste time trolling through that list, finding ones that I like that I think would be useful. This is an example of something that maybe could be a community, an op opportunity for community input. Someone, you know, if you have some rules that you like, you can create a PR, you know, maybe, you know, add a couple of rules that you think are good and uh, throw them my way and I'll take a look at it. And if I think they're good too, I'll add them. But just a couple of points of PR etiquette here. Uh, I don't want to see just a big change list of, you know, someone adding like 150 static analysis rules without any explanation. Uh, I don't want to figure out what they all are and how they're going to ruin my life. So I will just say, I will just cancel that PR. I will remove it. Uh, so I need the PR to tell me what it's doing, a little bit of words, human communication and preferably not too many rules in a single PR, so that'll be easier for me to, uh, you know, granularly uh, fine-grained choices of what I want to put in and what I don't want to put in. Uh, and another point of etiquette is if you add some rules and they generate warnings, it is good etiquette to fix those warnings as part of the PR, and if you just give me a bunch of rules that generate a huge amount of warnings, I will be annoyed and I'll, I probably won't add it in there. Unless the warnings are incredibly alarming, in which case I'll probably be happy to fix them because at least they were brought to my attention. But in any case, those are the, uh, those are the points of etiquette. And if you have rules, you know, for by all means, send them my way in a PR and uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if we can uh, add those into the project here. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again soon with some more C++ game engine infrastructure.